Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you can still take a drink, man. It's all right. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Byerly RV University. Uh, tonight, I'm Dave. I'm Rick. I'm going to take a drink, too, just so he doesn't yeah. feel so bad. <laughs> How's that? The comedy begins. There we go, right? Last, yeah. This is it. You know, it's, always, it's like the last day of school. <laughs> you know? Yep. It's our last school of the year. So it's kind of like last day of school. There's copyrighted music that we can't play that you'll have to just think to yourself. You know what song I'm talking about. Yep. Anyway, um, we're not allowed to play that kind of stuff, I guess. So I'm not even allowed to sing it. I asked. They said no. So sorry. Spared you guys, didn't we? Anyway, welcome but to school. But we're thinking about just getting out of here because it is the last day. It is Maybe the last day. just skip day. this whole thing and just go. Right? Should yeah. we just go? I'm ready to go camping. It's senior skip day. I think we should get out of here. Senior skip day. <laughs> So, anyway, guys, welcome. Um, this is, like we said, our last uh, school of the year. If you have any questions, please just uh, let us know. Mike is sitting in the wings here, ready to um, let us know if you've asked anything. He'll put it on the screen, and we'll do our best to answer it, right? Oh, we'll make up something. We usually do. Yep. So, I hope some of you guys have gotten out to go camping so far this year. Uh, it's been uh, we're, it's been the weather, of course, in Missouri. It's been yeah. all four seasons in two days, a couple times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, like, oh, this look, it's raining ice. Really oh, nice, look, the sun's though. out. It's raining ice. Yeah. The sun's out. Oh, wait, yeah. yeah. Oh, anyway. Yeah. So, but yeah, it is. Looks like it's going to be nice. Um, 80s. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah. And uh, let's see what else is going on. Big sale. Here at Byerly right now, we uh, we've got some great deals, you guys. Uh, for real, this time of year, this type of year, this time of year, excuse me. Um, it's uh, we've spent the entire winter time collecting a whole bunch of stuff, so that we've got it in stock right now. So that as it warms up, it's here because it's going to leave a lot faster than it got here. And way back in November, when we went out to open house, we signed these really these deals. They offer us deals. They say, look, we're going to make this trailer, and it's going to be a limited edition. We're going to make a run. All right, we're going to do, that's all we're going to make for like three weeks in the factory. How many of these things do you want? They're a special price, right? And these are the type of things that we bought a whole bunch of and have right now. So there's two trailers right now, uh, two Colorados, a 17-foot bunkhouse and a 17-foot rear bath, single axle, $13,995. Yeah, you so, pull, them, pull them behind a lot of smaller SUVs and yep. half-ton trucks and stuff. You don't have to worry about any of that. One of them's, I think one of them's 2,900 and one of them's 3,000, yeah. right? At, you know, so, yeah, absolutely. Small SUVs and stuff can pull them. You know, and at $14,000, my goodness, I mean, that's just, it's, that's you right. you know, you, yeah, you can, cheap. it's cheap. It's cheap to write a check for. You can go online and check out the financing stuff if you're interested, but you can get, you know, depending on credit and all that kind of stuff, and, and you know, well, heck, you put enough money down, you can have as low of a payment as you want. <laughs> that's absolutely. how down payment works. Absolutely. You know, uh, that, you know, that's the thing, guys. People like you know there's folks out there right now um advertising hey zero down no payments for 90 days guess what you're upside down you haven't even gone camping yet yes. okay yes. You haven't even, literally yes. the instant you left the lot you know what i mean so i mean it's like you would think they work for the bank uh but for real down payment is to your benefit you put a bigger down, bigger down payment down the bank will like make less money and you will pay less interest over the course of the loan and you'll never be upside That's down that's what it's so, really about man. it's paying less interest really i mean why give them the money right they're like oh yeah heck yeah zero down that's more money we're gonna make so anyway that just Keep that in mind. That's when people ask for down payment, they're not asking to, they're not trying to take your money. They're trying to help you, honest to God. And if they're not doing that, then it's just, you know, they're just leaving us to be financially irresponsible, which some of us are, and, you know, it doesn't help. Anyway, so um, that's, the, that's, the, that's the, the deal on that. But check out these deals. And we've even got, there's other stuff too. There's, um, we've got a 26 foot bunkhouse that's $19.95. And then we've got these new um, Winnebago's uh, starting at $29.95, which is an incredible price yeah. for a Winnebago travel trailer. Yes, it is. I mean, just high quality. I mean, great stuff. So across the board, all kinds of great stuff. New stuff from uh, Alliance, the Delta travel trailers. We've got the Extreme 365 from Alta, which is this insane travel trailer that's as tall as a fifth wheel and so cool. We've got a bunch of Versacargo stuff now where you've got like, it's not like a full toy hauler, but it's still got quite a bit of cargo space. I mean, just so much great things, you guys. Rebates. So right now, they just came out. Yeah, so any 2023 and older brand new sanctuary which of which we have too gets a seven thousand dollar rebate if you buy it by the end of april that's a lot of money for that something is. that's only like that's not that much money yeah. i mean you know in the grand scheme of things that's a yeah. huge rebate that pays your like sales tax you know or whatever that's yeah, great absolutely. we'll take that so 
Check that if out. Not, you put it down on your down payment. Seriously, you know, yeah. and it's so these are, we're calling it inflation busters, you guys, but we're just, you know, this is the time of year. It's the best selection. It's the best pricing. We bought as much as we could so we could give those deals to you. So that's enough of that, but for real, um, tell your friends. A lot of you guys already have RVs. That's great. They want to go with you. They can come here. They can rent something and go with you, or they could buy something really cheap and get started in this and get just as addicted as the rest of us, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so what are we talking about tonight? Uh, we're going to talk about RV power systems. Okay. So we're going to talk about how we get power and where it comes from and what we do with it, and then we're just going to leave. Okay. That works. Want to get started? Sure. Let's Anything get started. Anything else to talk about? No, that's my. You're, you're, this, the rest is you. I think we're, I mean, I don't have it. Right. Do you, can you think of anything else? I mean, just, okay, no. let's just talk about... We don't have any idea what's going to happen with the camp out. So for those of you loyal folks that watch and ask a lot, we appreciate that. Um, still working on that. There's a lot of things up in the air. Um, if we can get anything planned, we will. Um, but we won't do something until we know that it's going to be really good. Uh, so that's kind of the story on that. There's no good answer other than as soon as we know something, we will absolutely let you guys know. So And, and believe us, we're missing it. Oh. Every bit as much as you guys are. You know, and, and so seriously, that's, that's, we have every intent to get back to doing that. Um, it's just not easy to find a facility that can handle 400 people yeah. and do it well, you know, and make sure that we have a great experience because no matter what, if it's not a great experience, it doesn't matter. So we will uh, do our best on that and make sure we've had some new folks um, approach us and we've got some other folks to talk to and everything. So we'll see what happens, but we'll let you know on that. Um, I don't know. As I, I mean, you know, all you guys should know, hopefully we have the new service center open, the 16 base mm -hmm. service facility. We've got the indoor storage facility and the outdoor storage. So everything you need right here at Bradley RV because we believe that is what your home dealer should be, right? Yes. And people that are experienced like myself and Rick. Uh, so when you come in, there's people that know what they're talking about and know what they're doing. Um, that can save you lots of time and lots of money. And then for those of you that want to know more, that's what this is for. You know, we always say, what else can we do? And we started this Byerly RV University years and years ago now. We used to do it in person. COVID hit. We started to go online. Well, it turns out this way, everybody can watch. You know, eventually, we might get back to getting people back in here. So it's been... It's, it's been, been talked about, but Mark Miller, if maximum PSI on a tire is 80, should they be set at 80 or a little under? It should be set at whatever the placard on the side of the trailer says. The maximum tire pressure on a tire, maximum cold tire pressure, is for the rated weight of that tire. So a tire can hold 3,000 pounds at 80 PSI, whatever it is. You know, the numbers I'm just making up. But um, that's, what that, that's what that is all about. Manufacturers put a tire pressure on based on their load and the ride characteristics they want out of it. So if you inflate a tire to its maximum, it's going to be very hard, you know, especially when you get into big tires, you know, 80 PSI, 100, 110, 120 PSI type tires that are on big motorhomes. They get very hard, which stiffens your ride. Sometimes it's all right if you're, if you're carrying a whole lot of weight, but if, if you want a little bit smoother ride, a little bit more comfortable for the people inside, then you can lower those those tire pressures a little bit, and the manufacturers will specify that on their rating plates. Uh, I imagine they did a lot of testing on that to get oh, to that number. Yeah, I mean they you got know? engineers that sit in offices, you know, with little slide rules, figuring all yeah. that stuff out. That's you know that's one of the things that just real quick on that note, um, and before we get into the power systems and stuff, but um, I can remember folks coming up, you know, and now I go back because we've been doing this for so long, but. You know, you go back like 15 years and you started to see all these trucks with these fancy 20-inch wheels showing up all of a sudden, okay? And they had 20-inch wheels and they had passenger car tires on the things so because they didn't make 20-inch truck tire tires at the time and stuff like that, right? Yeah. And you'd have trucks with fancy wheels and cool-looking tires and all this kind of stuff. And these folks would come in and they'd buy the best weight distribution and sway control that we sell. And they would still have issues with sway. And I'd go out and I'd grab the side of the bed of the truck and I'd just grab it and I'd do this. And I'd say, look at the sidewall of your tire because those tires had a maximum pressure of 44, yeah. okay? And so that's the sidewalls of these things with 44 pounds in them. They just didn't have the, the uh -huh. you could see them just moving, you know? Yeah. And I told those folks, and I did this from experience because the same thing happened to me, is go out and get yourself some real truck tires that'll go up to 80, you know? Yeah. And I tow a... Uh, 4,200 pound empty camper, and I'm probably 5,200 or more loaded with all my stuff. Um, and uh, I do, you know, I have a small truck, and I put those tires, um, I don't go to 80 because I'm not putting 
I don't need that much, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Right, right. But I tell you what, I'll go up to 70 or mm -hmm. even 75 if I'm putting the generator in wood and everything yeah. in the back yeah. of the truck, you know? It's amazing. I don't, uh, yeah, I'll sign the waiver. I don't use sway control. <laughs> I use air, airbags and I don't use weight distribution. I don't use sway control. I air my tires. I got a good set of tires. I air them up like I should. I air my airbags up like I should, and it's absolutely an amazing, yeah. amazing ride. Yeah. And as soon as I unhook that trailer, there might as well not even be a suspension on this truck. <laughs> <laughs> not, they turn into hockey pucks. They're yeah. so hard yeah. without weight on them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, it's interesting that I've always thought, I, you know, what you said about the trailer especially, I always think about that door placard in my car. You know, I mean, it says right there what it should be. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Um, but I don't think a lot of people realize that the trailer has that same yep. placard. Left front corner. That, yep, up there with the VIN and stuff yep. on it, okay? Mm -hmm. But same placard. You know, I, I don't yep. think a lot of folks realize that. Yep. So. that uh, Great that question. Is, Thank yeah. you very much. Yep, and you always, I, and I always tell people that ask that question, don't go by what the tire says, go by what the manufacturer says. Mm-hmm. Go by that rating plate, air them up to that, get the ride, get the stability that you need for that that particular trailer. You won't go wrong. Yeah. You no, might I, you might not even lose a cap on a on a tire or something. I, I tell you, you this thing tows so good, Rick, when everything's aired up the way it should be. Yeah. It's amazing how well and how much of a difference that makes. I mean, just it, it really is. So. Yeah. It's important though that you keep it keep those pressures set at those don't let them go low don't let them go real high and always man it always always remember to check them cold yeah so yeah. all right um i guess we'll get started here all rv right. power systems so gonna jump right into it so yeah i should have took yeah this no quick. we forget to say that all the time yeah. you guys thank you very much for watching if you haven't already done so make sure you subscribe to yep. the youtube channel Sorry. click the bell icon so you're notified when we put up great new videos like this go live and do things like that you can also check us out on facebook instagram twitter and tiktok um, especially facebook uh, follow us on facebook because we do a lot of stuff on there that you won't see on youtube and vice versa so if you're hitting youtube and facebook and instagram but then you'll get pretty much everything we do so yep and that's also the best way to keep track of us uh, everything good because we post things on there and everything yeah. Um, the monthly updates and all that kind of stuff are all in, camp out. In there. That's the first place you're going to see it. Yeah. Anyway. So, and if you're and if you're uh, if you follow us, those you'll get those notifications when we put something up. Yep. Yep. So, good stuff. All right. So tonight's agenda, we're going to talk about how we get power for our RV. We're going to talk about what the sources of power are, uh, how the power is distributed and used in the RV. And uh, at the end, I'm going to uh, chastise everybody for not carrying tools with them, tell you what you should have. So maybe I'll just be nice and say, carry these. There you go. All right. I'm, now I'm hoping I, I got be, this stuff in mind. I won't be mine. mean now. That's all right. <laughs> I should be mean. I wish we were wireless. I'd say, let's go out to my camper and see if I have this stuff. I bet I do. I think I yeah. got most of this. Anyway, probably, let's go. Probably. So, <laughs> all right. So there are two main sources of power for the RV. What are they? 12 volt and 110. That 20, is correct. Whatever. So... 12 volt, that's your batteries. That provides power for the lights, logic power for most of your appliances in the RV, uh, your furnace, your water heater. Um, uh, thermostat. A lot of the refrigerators, the thermostat, yeah. Um, all work off of the 12 volt system uh, to provide the, the, the logic to operate these devices. Um, like the furnace, the blower and everything, is that's all 12 volt. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you lose your battery power, you lose a lot of function in your campers. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether it's a trailler or <laughs> I got a know, better one for a you. Five hundred thousand dollar motorhome. If the voltage drops too low, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nowadays yeah. we'll get into that. But losing, things are, when I say know. losing your batteries, that's what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah, you know, and, and I'll we will we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, what a what a depleted battery is, um, and then uh, so uh, one twenty AC power. Um, same thing that you have in your home and everything uh, is the thing that powers up our high voltage stuff, air conditioners, uh, the battery charging system, uh, all comes from um, our, our 120, the microwave. Um, so those are the things we get there. So ways to provide the power to the RV. So there's several different ways that we can actually get our power uh, into the RV. So the first one, of course, is your shore power. Uh, 
that's generated by a local utility company and it comes through the, the transmission lines and, and you plug into an outlet uh, with your short cord and you got your AC voltage. The second one for our motorized, I thought I turned that off. I, knew, um, I thought you did too. Yeah, I know I turned it off. Um, anyway, he, sorry about that. He's busy right now. So, uh, <laughs> so our generator is our second one. Uh, this is for the motorized people and those uh, like Dave that carry a, a portable generator around with them. Um, you Conveniently fire up the available at your local RV dealer. Anyway. Fire the RV, right? <laughs> Commercial. I love my generator from here, you guys. We'll get into that some later. Yeah, Go they, ahead. they are awesome. <laughs> um, so anyway, that's the, that's the second. So our batteries are on board power system. That provides our 12 volt. Um, we have inverters that take battery power and convert it into 120 volt power to power up outlets and stuff like that so we can charge our phones and use our computers and uh, our Starlink systems and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, And then last but not least is solar power. The primary function of solar power is to keep our batteries charged. So. So these are just a couple of uh, typical boxes that you might see in a campground. Uh, we got a 30 and a 50 amp and a 20 amp outlet, and they're circuit breaker protected. Um, and this would be where, when you pull when you pulled into your campsite, that you would plug in your short cords at. The only the only thing missing from that is the wasp nest. It's really in there <laughs> anyway. You know, hopefully hopefully the campgrounds are busy enough that right. you don't have to worry about that. But uh -huh. yes, that is something when you open that lid the first time, especially in the springtime, if the if the campground hasn't been busy yet, yeah. yeah take a, be be a little uh, delicate at opening that lid just to, to plug in because in you there just, as long as you're you nice just and slow never know. And easy there. Yeah. Anyway. So <laughs> That's, that's good public service announcement. I'm just saying. So, <laughs> these are ways that you can get power to your RV at home. You can buy these boxes and you can have an electrician come out to your here. house and install it. We right. sell them. That is mm -hmm. correct. Um, we have 30 amp power panels. We have um, 50 amp power panels. We also have just like a 50 amp receptacle box that doesn't have a break or anything on it. So you would, you would protect that from inside your home. Um, and like I said, you can have an electrician come out and wire them. You have to remember on the 30 amp, it's a 120 volt 30 amp, not a 220 volt 30 amp. Hey, quick Very question important. before we go on from boxes. Just this, just a uh, your opinion on this, or what should people do? So punt. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> when you when you pack, when you pull up at the campsite and you're going to plug your shore power in, should the breaker be off before you plug in the shore power, or should it be on, or does it matter? On a on a on a 30 amp, it probably doesn't really matter because you're just going to plug it in. You can't really mess that up. On a 50 amp, I like to turn it off. Just because you got two parallel lines there. And well, you... you got that ground bar. Okay. It sticks way out. Yeah. So if you put that plug in a little bit crooked and you get that ground bar in and then you hit your power bars before the neutral hits, you're putting 220 across both legs of the coach. Okay. There you don't you have you don't have that reference point back to the neutral bar to to break the the, the two twenty coming in down to one ten or one twenty. So okay. Yeah, it, wow. Uh, there you go. Glad you can, I asked. You can definitely cause a problem. So one day I hoped on a fifty amp camper, yeah, but right now I don't. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so yeah. To, to to yes to to answer your question, uh, turn it off on a fifty amp on a thirty amp. It's not so big a deal. Okay. Cool. So, Thanks. All right. Next. Mm. Hey, there's the there generator. <laughs> yeah, there's that little portable that Dave was Gosh, talking about. I love that thing. This thing is awesome. It's an Onan generator. We sell them down there in the store. It's a 4,500 watt, isn't it? Or 4,000 watt? 4,500 watt peak, yeah. 3,700 watt run. Yeah. Or, so it's a, a, it's a full 30 amp system. It will, yeah. it, will, it will drive a 30 amp system, and it will give you a little bit of extra power to, to be able to start that air conditioner and everything uh, when it needs to. I mean, basically, it's it, well. It's got a thirty amp plug, just mm -hmm. like it. You know, I don't right. need an adapter. I yeah. love that. Yes. And you know, 
I, I don't think, I think I would overload, the, I would probably have a better chance of overloading some old plug at a campground than I would mm -hmm. that thing. Yeah. I mean, yeah. honestly, it's really just, I don't think the camp, I mean, I think that I, you know, I mean, it's just amazing. It's in its remote start and it, it just purrs and it's quiet. And if you're not running it's your very air, quiet. it's really it's quiet. It's very quiet. I went all It's almost weekend. quieter than the than the micro quiet. No, it that, is because the yeah. guy next to me this weekend. Yeah. Okay, last we were down dry camping for the Eclipse, and there was a Class C motorhome with a 4,000 watt Onan yeah. next to me, Same thing. and I had that. And I'm telling you, my portable generator was quieter than that yeah. than that than that 4,000 watt on that uh, yeah. on that Class C. It and was basically the same generator, yeah. just a different a different uh, enclosure. Yeah, so. it was it was great. I mean, it's just I'm I couldn't be happier about it. And then it's it's literally performed flawlessly in every condition I've put it in. But the best part is, is that if I needed to have it worked on, I can literally take it to the service center that's seven miles down the road. I mean, and the, mm -hmm. and 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 owning service center where they're actually going to fix this thing yep. uh, by the people that made it. You know, it's just yeah. great. It's yep. I'm really. Couldn't be happier. And and the things now, 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 Nate's upgraded our stocks. So now we stock the dual fuel. Oh, cool. So he's stocking dual fuel. It'll run on propane. It'll run on uh, uh, regular unleaded gas. Um, I think they're fifteen ninety nine now. Okay. Which isn't that bad, you guys, for something that yeah. is, you know, this is not a disposable that's, product. That's, <laughs> dirt, that's dirt cheap for that generator. I know. Because the same thing Thank in the micro quiet is, is $4,000. $4,000. Thank you, know? you. And it's not dual fuel. Yeah. So I know. That's just, it's it's a great deal, you guys. It's a great deal. You know, it really is. And yep. so, yeah. anyway. So. But, but uh, back to what that is, folks. That's a generator. Now that we've done, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, and it, and I'm sure if you're sitting there at home, you've probably already done read everything. So I don't need to go through reading all that. But basically, it just tells how you determine what size generator you need to do Mike's something. It's gonna kill me here. So <laughs> that's a new it's watch. You that keeps it's a new watch. I don't know how. I just figured it out. <laughs> so <laughs> silented now. Um, or silenced. So that was good too. Sometimes you need to use <laughs> adapters or extension cords or something like that because uh, you might have a 50 amp service, but the campground <laughs> you're at only has 30 amps. So you, we have dog bones um, that what we call them. That's the little short piece there. Uh, <laughs> Let's get plug, in, plug in your 50 amp, and then you got a 30 amp on the other side. Um, we have twist lock cords uh, to replace your your short cords. We have them in 30 and 50 amp. And also, we have it just basic extension cords if you just need more cord length. And we have them in 30 and 50 amps also. We have a very handy uh, item we use in the media department. It is a 50 amp twist lock with a 15 amp yeah. Same on as, the other side. Oh, yeah, if yeah. you look, look at the one on the left, yeah. it, it's a 50 amp to a 15 amp. This is, it's a twist lock yeah. and stick your thing right. It's just yeah. perfect for I home. use a lot of them at the shows. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We use it out on the porch when we do our videos. Yeah. But anyway. But, yeah, the good thing about that is um, if you're not running your high amperage devices, you just need to be able to keep the batteries charged yep. and maybe run a refrigerator cold. or something. You know, that, that 50 to, to 15 is an awesome little, little tool it to works. be able to do that. Yeah. And, you know, and lights. like I said, as long as you're not, as long as you're not trying to use um, any of the high voltage, so your microwaves or air conditioners and stuff like that, yeah, that you can keep your keep your batteries charged and and ready to go in a yeah. moment's notice. So, what's wrong with here? <laughs> what do you think happened there, Dave? I think it wasn't plugged in all the way. That could possibly. be possibly, or yep. since I don't actually see weld marks. Actually, let me re let me let me. Ref no, I don't think that's what happened because I don't see weld marks on the end of those electrodes if it was arcing like that. So I'm just going to say that they were somehow able to pull too much through that thing. I'm not melted, I can tell you that. Yeah, this, <laughs> this, this could have been caused by two things. Poor connections. You can see that the, the, both of the blades there are kind of corroded. That will cause um, too much heat. Yeah. Okay. So that resistance yeah. of the flow of electrons through from the plug into the cord causes heat, causes resistance, causes heat, okay? Um, excessive current will cause the same thing because this this equipment can only handle so much power before it starts reaching its its limits for the the flow of electrons through it, and then it will start heating up. So 
This could have been caused by too much current going through it. They might have been trying to draw 35 or 40 amps through it, AR, or possibly it could have just been a poor connection into the receptacle. The receptacle might have been bad. Uh, the ends of the cord here could have been just all corroded and bad, not allowing a good flow. Um, but either way, it heated it up and, and caused it to melt, as you can see. So that should probably... That should be replaced. Thank you. <laughs> so, um, and just like we just said, uh, you can see in both of these pictures that uh, the receptacles on the, on the plug are not in the best of shape. You got a broken out uh, ground top on the, on the 30 amp there on the left. And then you've got uh, in, the, in the 50 amp there, you've got blades that are, that are spread apart and you got one that's all bent over the wrong way and stuff. So all of this could be causing the same types of problems that caused that other cord than that last pitcher to, to do what they were doing. Um, and obviously the more power that your unit's drawing, if, you're, if you've got the air conditioner on, you're drawing 12 to 15 amps as a general rule of thumb. You turn the, the water heater on, you're drawing another 10, so now you're up to 22 amps. You add another five to eight for your converter and TVs and miscellaneous stuff that are plugged in. You know, now you're right at 30. And then somebody wants to turn on the microwave or a hair dryer right. or whatever, and yeah, boom, now you're up to 38 to 40 amps. There's nothing know? wrong with your camper. Right. <laughs> and that's yep. not, I mean, seriously, there's more than enough things in that camper to allow you to attempt to overdraw yes. what you're plugged into. So yes. as camper owners, we have to know. I was just going to ask that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I'm, How many extension cords? Is too just many. I was going to ask him before we went to the next slide. Thank you very much, Michael Fries, Senior, for participating. We appreciate it. That's no more Mike's than dad. one 50 amp extension cord. Truthfully. Okay, so I can have my shore power and then one more. Right. And I don't want to go more than that. You don't want to generally go more than that. I mean. That's my understanding. You start. You start. Not only do you have connections that you're having to make and start degrading power, but just the length of the run, you're still using a 30 amp cord or a 50 amp cord, and you're extending that run way, 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 way out. So you needed, if you were going to do something like that, you would really need to upgrade the wiring to allow that current flow at a better rate um, through, through a longer line. So. Um, 50 amp, you're probably really honestly the the, the power cord from the from the unit, and probably a 25 foot cord. Um, they make 50s, but probably you know, so you got roughly 25 to 30 feet on your on your shore reel or your shore cord, and then adding another 25 foot to it to get to the receptacle. And, I can only and on imagine. A 30 amp, you can go up to 50 usually. <laughs> A 50 foot 50 amp cable would be like wrestling a python, man. I it mean, is. Like, <laughs> Especially if it's cold God. out. That's what I yeah. think. I That's, can only imagine trying to mess yeah, with that. Weigh that like is 150 tough, pounds. But. <laughs> so, all right. So, how do we get the power into the RV? We know now we've plugged into the shore and, or we got the generator running or whatever. So, the power is controlled. If you got a motorized, um, unit, you're going to have what they call a transfer switch in it. Um, and this is what selects between the two types of power in a motorhome. So you have your shore power or you have your generator. A transfer switch is always going to be wired generator priority. So what that means is if you start the generator in about 45 to 60 seconds, the transfer switch will kick over and operate the unit off the generator. Even if I'm plugged into shore power? Even if you're plugged into shore power. Okay. So the, the whole purpose of a transfer switch is to isolate power sides. So you cannot have both types of power at the same time. You cannot have shore power and the generator both providing power to the coach at the same time. Gotcha. So that's what a transfer switch does. It, it separates the two power systems. Uh, and as I said, it's generator priority. So if you start the generator, it will always select the generator after about 45 to 60 seconds of the generator running. 
The reason why it waits that long is it allows the generator to stabilize right. once it starts up. So Because you don't want to hit a cold generator with a load. Right. Um, you know, when you start a generator up, it'll usually kind of rev up, and then yeah. it'll kind of idle down, and then it kind of just, you know, goes at that, at that level. So you want it to kind of go at that level there for a little bit, um, and then, you know, that helps to circulate the oil and everything up inside the generator, and then you can hit it with the load, right? you know, and then it's going to, and then it's going to take off and the governor will kick in and, and adjust the RPMs as needed to compensate for the load. So, um, so some of the, Mark Miller, is there a better way to get TV if camping? Why are we asking, why are we getting questions about things we're not talking about? We know Mark. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's messing with us. No. Uh, uh, but it's good question, so. Uh, is there a better way to get camping or TV if camping and won't pick up any TV channels? Yeah, I'll pull it on the other side of the hill. Well, I, would, I mean that or uh, what I've been doing is it. By Starlink. Yeah, or even through your phone or whatever yeah. you stream. I mean, that's, and it's like nowadays, I would not want to be somebody who sells RV satellite dishes because you're eating, yeah. you're just not selling a lot right now. Yeah. Um, because everybody is, almost everybody, I mean, I only know one person, Stripping honestly, that's not paying for some sort of service, yeah. whether it be cable, satellite, or just streaming, whatever. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. But even if you're on satellite or cable, you still almost always have an option of streaming your content through an app. Yep. And... So depending on your phone service, you know, you can maybe tether your phone to um, something like an Apple TV mm -hmm. or a device like that or a Roku stick or something, just like, mm -hmm. you know, your, wi your phone can be the source of the Wi-Fi, right? Right, right. Um, I bought a cable to go from my Apple plug to mm -hmm. HDMI. Yeah. And so I, I know can, Android does that too. Yeah, and so my TV in my camper has an HDMI plug, mm -hmm. and I use that adapter, and I plug it right into my phone, and then mm -hmm. I use the app or mm -hmm. YouTube, whatever I want to watch, right. and it puts it right up on my TV. Right. Just, you know? just mirrors it right to your TV. And, and Rick's mentioned Starlink a couple times. I do really like my Starlink. I mean, it, when it's working and it's on, it's amazing. You know, we were had 16 people on it at the last camp out. So, I mean, you, yeah. you can literally, it's amazing what this thing does when it's yeah. on. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. just, I really like it. And yeah. it allows me to not only stream my programming, things like that, but when I'm somewhere where I don't have a cell signal, um, all of our phones can, yeah, you make calls yeah. over Wi-Fi. I right. mean, we're all down to make a phone call. It was great. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I, I got mine set up to do it here. Yeah. I, I yeah. don't even use you know, cell. To, I mean, it, it's it, all it, Wi-Fi calling. Yeah. And so uh, that, that type of thing is great, you yeah. know. So that's, that's how a lot of us are getting TV now, yeah. you know. Yep. Yep. I know everything I get at home is all streamed in. Yeah, so I'd, I mean, you know, they yeah. want you to stream. It's right. I'm in marketing now. I love streaming, man. I can feed you commercials that are exactly yep. what you're looking for. Yep. <laughs> Your neighbors get into everyone. <laughs> it's pretty neat. All right. So um, once we've gone through the transfer switch, or in the case of a 30 amp system, we're going straight to our distribution panels. Um, so a 50 amp usually is going to have just a breaker panel. And the converter will either be a converter, like I showed there in the middle picture, or it's going to be an inverter charger. Mm. Depends on what, um, what type of, of systems they put in that. Uh, most of the time, your 30 amp panels are going to have the power section in the bottom. You see that, you see that board at the bottom of the, of the 30 amp panel there on the right. And that's what's creating all your 12 volt. And then you've got your fuses and distribution for the 12 volt systems. Um, they're on the right, and you've got your 120 volt in the breakers, they're on the left side. In the 50 amp panel, you have a separate box where your 12 volt comes from. So I didn't show that in here, but there'd be just a, a small panel that's got just fuses in it. And, that's right. where, and that would be your 12 volt distribution there. I've got a quick question on this. Yeah. Um, personal question, sorry. Okay. <laughs> but if... Uh, Oh, hey. Aw. Hello. <laughs> um, she turned in. Yeah, see? <laughs> Thank you. Um, the, uh, see, now I don't even remember what the heck I was going to say. Oh, yeah, now I do. <laughs> um, 
All right, so the converter, so there's a battery charger built into this somewhere, right? Right. And so I've got a solar panel that has a charge controller. And so it's like, and then there can be multiple items connected to a battery. Correct. Each one having its own controller type of device. Correct. And therefore, nothing's going to overcharge anything, essentially, because when this thing, when the, when the, when the converter, when the converter charger, inverter, char when that sees full battery, it stops. When the solar panel sees full battery, it stops, right? I mean, is that... In theory. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I don't <laughs> think they all... Whatever, it, it whatever just, thing's working, right? Yeah, just that's to be what fair, it I don't think they all stop <laughs> at the same spot. No. Because I'm watching no. this happen. Yeah. And then I have one other question. So if I'm plugged into my truck... And, or, you know, I'm towing, mm -hmm. and I'm getting 12-volt feed from that. Is that going through the charger that's in the converter? No. What is that doing? Just feeding hard without going through anything? It goes straight to the battery. Straight to the battery. Yeah. Hard feed. So what, it, okay. what, they, what they generally do is, is somewhere up on the tongue, underneath the tongue, somewhere up in the front of the trailer, there's a junction box. Okay. So all of the wires from your seven-way come into there. So you've got a charge connection in there. Mm -hmm. that it hooks up to that charge wire coming out of the seven-way cable. And it's going to hook up to the battery, and it's also going to hook up to the line going to the converter. Usually, so it'll feed 12-volt into the... Okay. Sometimes they do separate them, sure. and, your, and your battery line will come out and charge the battery, and then you'll have a separate line going back to the trailer. But most of the time, they're just connected down there. Okay. You know, well, if it's connected to the battery and feeding the battery, and the battery is right. connected to the stuff back there, it's good right. that way anyway. Right. So. Right. It right. keeps the whole it keeps the whole system working. So you're charging mm. your battery, plus you're providing power to the coach at the same time. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Yep. Yeah. So, what was I talking about? Um, battery. Well, I don't know what we were. We were talking oh. about that. We talked about mess of looking yeah. thing. So <laughs> I think we'll just go to the next page. Okay. So mm. batteries. These are the new batteries we carry nowadays. I updated this picture because oh. I didn't want Michael yelling at me. Okay, good job. Yeah. So I had I had some old stuff in there. <laughs> so, but uh, so anyway, 12 volt, 6 volt, um, everything in an RV is 12 volt based. All right? You just heard me say 6 volt battery. So what do we do to a 6 volt battery to make it a 12 volt battery? To them. To them. And then we have to hook them up. In series. Good. Oh. He, does, <laughs> he does listen occasionally. We've been doing this like, I don't know how many yeah. years. <laughs> he actually does listen occasionally. So, yeah. If, if we want to... The, the, the advantage of using two 6-volt batteries is the capacity. So, our 6-volt batteries are 225 um, amp-hour batteries. They're, they're heavy duty, they're, they're heavy, and they got very thick uh, plates inside them, so they have a good discharge rate, um, and they will keep things working for quite a while, you know? 220 amp hours is, is quite a bit of power, mm -hmm. you know? Um, versus a 12 volt battery, we have two different 12 volt batteries we use. We have one that's an 85 amp hour battery, which is our basic um, travel trailer battery, and then we have a 105 amp hour battery that we put in most of the fifth wheels. Um, so, you wanna go back to that page, Mike? So, one of the things uh, that you'll see in the, at the end of that wrote, uh, stuff I got wrote there, I brain dead there, um, a fully discharged 12 volt battery is not zero volts. Right. Everybody thinks a, a, a discharge battery is, you know, zero volts or something like that. No, it's not. It's 10 and a half volts. Yeah. That battery is basically useless below 10 and a half volts. Yeah, you might get some lights or something like that. You know, you might, the refrigerator might stay on down no, to about 9.8 volts. Oh, no. Some of them. The, old, <laughs> the older ones will. I was going to say, the new, uh, these new 12-volt yeah. compressor-driven no, things will, will beep at you, yeah. I mean, to tell you they get angry. Yeah. They'll, they'll, start, <laughs> they'll start getting funny about 11 and a half volts Seriously, a lot of times. they do. It, yeah. it really, well, the problem uh, is this, is your battery can be sitting at 11 and a half, and as soon as the compressor in that thing hits, it yeah. goes, I've, I've been watching this yeah. all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I just got so, a new battery. Um, but, I mean, it's just, oh, my goodness. Yeah, you know? so 
it, it's important. It's very important that that we monitor our batteries, especially when we're when we're dry camping. We have to go to that monitor panel yeah, and see where the condition of those batteries is. When that thing, most most of those have uh, have three actual lights that determine what the battery is. You have you have uh, I think it's a C, an F, and a and a uh, I forget what they are now. Well, see now I use my charge controller. Because it gives me an actual right, uh, and if and, a and digital if readout, that, which yeah, is wonderful. Yeah, if you have that, that's great. Yeah. But if all you got is the monitor panel, you got to watch them three lights. Yeah. So C is the is the fourth light that is charging. That's plugged that in. That means that means yeah, that means you got power coming from something, and you're charging the battery. The F is full, um, and then you, I think you had E and. Uh, Maybe an EM or something for middle uh, maybe, or something like that. I forget what that. It's been a while now since I actually looked at a push monitor, but if it gets to that middle light of the three main lights, you better start thinking about getting that thing oh, plugged yeah. in. Yeah. Because you're gonna be losing power on things pretty quick. Um. So. Oh hey, thanks for watching. Yeah. I, <laughs> what's late to the party? Have fun listening to Dave. That. Uh, what is that? At one and a half times speed, that's oh, what Mike okay. does when he has to review the videos, too. Uh, I walk in, I sound like the guy from the Micro Machines commercial. It's funny. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you can keep up at one and a half speed, that is awesome. <laughs> yes, you oh, can definitely add a second battery for longer dry camp camping. And that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, it's something I, I would highly recommend. Yeah. If, you're, if you're doing a lot of boondocking, yeah, add another battery because well, it will definitely increase your capacity. Yeah. I mean, if you have one... 85 amp hour battery up there now, and you add a second one, now you have 170 amp hours. Well, and again, it, it's really a big deal if you've got one of these new, I love, I, I really love my fridge. 10.3 cubic feet, compressor driven, it's a beautiful, beautiful appliance. And it's well, a it heavy 12 volt user. I yeah. mean, this thing, it's not heavy, heavy, but it's pull, it's, when it's running, it's pulling about six to eight. Yeah, amps. it's a lot heavier than, I, than you realize, right. you know. So it's a lot more than an absorption refrigerator. It is. Used. So I've got one 200 watt panel, and I've got one of our standard 85 amp hour lead acid batteries. Yep. And if I get multiple cloudy days, it won't keep up. I'll right. start getting a right. beep. Right. But I know that if I had a second battery. Yeah, that would get me through. I don't need yeah. much more, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm right, but it's like it would. If I just and honestly, if I had a second battery and a second solar panel, it'd be even better. Yeah. But just the second battery alone, um, you know, you, you you just have to remember, adding a battery adds capacity. Right. That's that's the big thing. Yeah. The only place that doesn't work is in your six volts. Okay. So you add you you go to two. You got to add in pairs, then, right? You ha you go to two six volts. You're not adding capacity. Because you have to you have to um, series them together to make them a 12 volt. So there's still you may have two batteries that are 220 amp hours, but you're not getting 400 amp hours out of that. You're still only getting 220. So now I've seen that in a so, big motorhome. Then what they're yeah. doing is they're taking two six volts, wiring them in series, two more wiring them in series, and then paralleling them two Correct. sets together. Correct. That's what they're doing. Correct. Okay. And that's and that and then doing yeah. that now now they have 480. Yeah. Or 440 amp hours They're also amp using hours like these copper bus bars in there that are like yeah. big old connections a lot of times. Or the wires. Sometimes, and there's yeah. some stuff. Yeah, it's, I mean, <laughs> you know, two-watt cable and stuff like that. Yeah. You know, it's about yay big around, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but, I wish I had that much battery. Yeah. So that's, that's your lead-acid batteries. Then you got the lithium batteries. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not a real super big fan of the lithium batteries. Um, they're good, but they're they're just so expensive still, and they've gone up in price because there's so much demand for the lithium right now and everything. Well, it's not only that they went up in price because they realized that these batteries need built-in heaters. Yep. And yep. that they need you know like you talked about monitoring. Yeah. So nowadays the second generation of everybody's batteries are Bluetooth heaters built mm -hmm. in. You know, and and the reality was is. I mean, lithium's great, and if you have an unlimited budget, good for you. I mean, yeah. you know, you can take your current Winnebago Revel, and for different, there's like a $20,000, $30,000 upgrade for batteries and stuff, mm -hmm. if you want to right now, 
You and know, you got to upgrade the charging system I mean, and everything. It's, it's you amazing. You got to put special handling do. equipment in there to, you know, to, to but protect the But I think those were also lithium. oversold in the beginning. I really I do. So. Those, you know, those lithium batteries, people would get these things. And if you start doing simple math with it, well, I got 300 amp hours and my air conditioner draws 16 amps. I should theoretically be able to run that. Nope. Yep. That is not how that worked. <laughs> You're going to get about two hours. Not at out all. Of that. Yeah, no matter how, you know, yeah. you had, I mean, and so the math didn't necessarily add up there. Right to maybe meet what someone's expectation was for the amount of money that they spent. Right. And so right. now, okay, I don't know that that part's changed at all. I think yeah. that the expectations become more realistic. And also, yeah. all this extra stuff they're putting in them now has made them more expensive. I mean, I think that the going rate for one of these new Go Power 100 amp hour batteries is close to like 1300 or 1500 bucks. Yeah. You know, and the and like the bigger ones, the 300 amp hours are over 3 grand, I think retail. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just for for my money I would go to an AGM battery. Honestly, you're for gonna me, get you're gonna get more life yeah. than just a flooded cell. It's not gonna it's not gonna even out to a lithium, which will take five thousand recharging cycles, maybe. So they well, say. And, and that's something. But, hey, you know what? Really, when you're talking about a battery with a ten year warranty, because these things typically do have a ten year warranty. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's something to think about. Is the ten year warranty? Even if this battery, you know, let's do simple math. If my lithium battery is a thousand bucks, and if a lead acid battery is two hundred, and I replace that every other year because I don't do good on my batteries and stuff, my cost yeah. over ten years is the same. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. yeah. You know, I don't know things. I was, you know, I like the lithium. One thing I do like about lithium for me, I, you know, like I was talking about, my I don't have a big truck and mm -hmm. I don't use weight distribution. Yeah. Lithium would allow me to put the battery inside. Yeah. Which would be kind of cool. You know, yeah. I've got room inside my camper. I can and move you, it from the you, tongue to the inside. You almost have to put it inside. Otherwise, you got to worry about it being outside. stolen. Well, stolen. You know? And just because they say they're waterproof, that doesn't mean they should be immersed. And right. that can happen out there in that yeah. battery box. Yeah. Yeah. And, and like Rick said, I mean, anybody knows anything. I mean, if there's $6,000 of batteries up in the front of your thing, they're going to go through a lot to get to those things. I mean, look what they'll do for a catalytic converter that's worth a few hundred. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so um the big difference between your lithium battery and your and your lead acid batteries, as you can see the curve there, the, the red or orange one there at the top is your lithium. It's gonna have a much more stable voltage until it gets near the end of its of its life cycle there, and then it's gonna drop off. And this is just a charge cycle. This is not when I say life cycle, I get meant charge cycle. Whereas you can see that your lead acid in the blue, it just it's a constant voltage drop until it gets near the end of, of that charge cycle, and then it drops off. So the advantage for lithium is that power, that power curve stays much more stable. All of your devices that are using power like that. They like oh, stable power. Would they like don't, that. Yeah, they don't like seeing that voltage <laughs> right. getting lower. Um, everything that we that we use, that we that we power with this stuff, all likes voltage. They well, like to see is, voltage. This is a lot like a battery-operated flashlight that just gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer and dimmer mm -hmm. versus my cell phone that just goes from on to off. Right. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, it yeah. doesn't get dimmer. It's, it just yeah. goes by. And, and, if, and if you're lucky, it may beep at you or know, something right? before it turns Report off. Report its you know? last final location yeah. anyway. Yeah, something like that. But, <laughs> but that's, I mean, if, if you're looking for, if you're really hardcore into, into, um, boondocking and stuff like that, it, it might not be a bad idea to go lithium. And then you can also go to other things beyond that. So, but we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, yeah, yeah. Michael just whispered in my ear. He, uh, we were talking yesterday about lithium, and I, I had mentioned to him that there's a, I had read something about another form of of battery that was supposed to be um, having good test results and stuff like that and it's and it's sodium ion so the neat thing I read about that is it's much more stable it's everywhere so the cost is so much lower than trying to go lithium 
and I, I'm buying sodium lithium stock right now. So yeah, I just keep I, I was watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what or sodium that? ion. Yeah, you saw Price, I'm, Price sodium Waterhouse there. Sodium yeah. battery manufacturer there. I just bought a bunch of stock so, for two pennies. But yeah, I mean, every, everything I read about it, and this this was a month or two ago that I that I read all this, um, was very very positive. Um, they're just they're they're still working on developing it. So I mean, it isn't something that's gonna we're gonna see probably in the next year or something, but maybe in two years or three years. Hey. Um, and it could be the next revolution in batteries. If that happens, now you have something that makes electric vehicles and stuff like that even more of a of a positive type thing. Yeah. You know, every, everybody talks about the electrical vehicle, vehicles not being so green, you know. Yeah, they have no You mean because we charged it off a plug that's powered by coal? Exactly. Okay. You know, so, you know, the the the, the people that want to argue about, you know, electric vehicles and stuff, that's that's going to be their argument, you know, that, you know, you're still you're still burning coal so many places to, to power this thing up and, and charge this car that, you know, doesn't put out... So there's trade-offs for everything, you know. It, it's not a perfect world, you know, but hey man, we're trying to get better at it. One of, the, one of the funnest things to watch on YouTube is people getting rides in electric cars for the first time. Yeah. They're fast. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, remember, uh, I remember several years ago um, we were out looking for a car, and a uh, salesman was going to take us to a, a second lot that this dealership had. And he had a Prius. Oh. And it was the first time I'd ever been in an electric car. Uh -huh. So we got in a Prius, and it's like, there's no engine noise. That, they're Anything. making some and of them make noise now. I that. I can't remember yeah. what it was the other day. It started in front of us, and it actually made like an artificial noise. Yeah. Because otherwise, people get run over by these things because yeah. they don't hear them coming. I know Teslas <laughs> have started doing that. Um, anyway. Yeah, just to make... You know, I just safety. I think, I think it's really weird because, you know, you see the... Uh, the Amazon trucks that are electric. Yeah, I know. You know, and when they're driving through the neighborhood, all you hear is this whizzing, whirring I type know. sound, and it's it's like, what was that? You how look, heavy, and, and there's a, there's that, that Amazon that truck is. going by, and it they just sound weird. Some things got to be heavy. Yeah. Heavy. Yeah, they got to be. They got that thing's probably. In Fenton, where the plant is, there's like a million plugs. You see them things out there plugged uh -huh. in, dude. Oh my uh -huh. god. Anyway, I'm surprised they don't have their own trans or like home power plant there. So. Um, all right, so we were, supposed to be talking, we were supposed to be talking Speaking about something here, and we're off on a different tangent. So um, so our power for the batteries, um, it has to go through some kind of circuit protection. So uh, you have circuit breakers, you have fuses of different kinds, um, but it's got to go from the battery to the distribution panel, but it has to go through some kind of a power protection. Um, otherwise, you could catch fire. <laughs> if that shorts out, you could catch fire. I was, so. when I used to do walkthroughs, I'm like, here's your fire extinguisher, folks. It's, <laughs> it's the first thing you pass on the way in, and it's the last thing you pass on the way out when it's yep. on fire. Yep. Anyway. <laughs> Sur surprisingly enough, I was, I, was, I was coming in this morning, and I was passing the, the metal scrap place down here in Valley Park. And there's a, on their scale, there's a, I don't know, probably a 35-foot trailer, and the whole back end of it is burned out. Oh wow! Yeah, it's yeah. like oh wow! <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. I was I said what 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 are they? It looked like a you know from the front it kind of looked like a nice trailer, metal skin trailer and stuff. And then I see the back and it's all like from the outside kitchen back. It's just burned out. <laughs> Mike so. found one of these batteries. Oh okay, sodium ion battery. Yeah. Cool. So they are actually out now. Apparently so. Yeah, I did not know they were out. How much are they? I. Uh, if that's right, three hundred seventy-eight bucks. I'll try one. Yeah, that's, <laughs> three hundred seventy-eight bucks for what? What was the amp hundred amp hour? Hundred amp hour. I mean, that's, that's like a. It's just a little price. bit more than your, uh, what we're getting. You know. Yeah. It may be double the price of what we're getting for for a hundred amp hour battery. Wow. But, I mean, that's 
That's a good deal. That is. I would, yeah, I would almost be tempted to go check them out. You know, the funny thing is it looks you're eerily, eerily like a battery manufacturer that we have, you know, and so if you're going to test market something, you do it under not your own name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, because that way if it fails, it's not associated with your name. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We might have seen this before. Anyhow. So, um, <laughs> all right, so um, the other, uh, another source of power for our 20, uh, 120 volt is our inverter chargers. So these provide two things. Number one, they provide charging power for our batteries when we're plugged into shore or running the generator. And when we're not plugged in or running the generator, they can provide 120 volt power for outlets and sometimes a microwave or something like that. In some cases, even an air conditioner can run on them if you have the proper battery setup and stuff. Um, but they come in several different types of uh, sizing, which is based on wattage. So you have uh, th about 3,000 watts is your biggest ones, uh, and they go down to you know a couple hundred watts that you can plug into a cigarette lighter just to be able to charge your phone or something like that. Mine came with a 1,000 watt inverter, which mm -hmm. is like... It's, that's pretty common. It's, it's I, you know, it's, I wish it had 2,000. I mean, a 1,000 watt inverter doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah, it'll power things like Starlink. Mm. It'll power stuff like that, but it won't make a cup of coffee. Yeah. A 2,000 watt inverter will make a cup of coffee. Yeah. And that, for me, is just, that. that's my thing, is just, I, it's, I really wish I could just make, if I could make a cup of coffee with this thing yeah. without having to turn on any power, that is my you know i mean and i could i think so with a 2000 watt well you need you know you could probably do it with a 1200 watt um but yeah a 2000 watt would definitely i mean that's you know definitely be you know the right way to go i mean but but, but you start getting into those big ones like that then you're jacking the prices up quite a bit well and that's the thing and then i'm like well if i'm gonna buy 2000 i'll buy 3000 because i'm pretty yeah. sure that with a hard start i can run my air off of 3000 so because i got a 13.5 that draws yeah. 1650 on that generator yeah. So I'm, I you'd, really think you'd have to you'd really have to up your batteries. Yeah, I get to run it for about that. 15 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Down. Until I get six thousand dollars in yeah. batteries, yeah. it's so. all right. <laughs> That's why. Okay, so seriously, all this talk about this amount of money that this lithium and everything costs because it's extremely expensive. All right, yes. the fifteen hundred ninety nine dollar generator. You it's, it's so looking great, pretty, man. Looking pretty good right now, isn't it? It's yeah. awesome. When you're talking, you know, five to eight thousand, maybe I'm ten or eleven thousand dollars to do a solar cell. I can go anywhere with a five gallon tank, <laughs> five gallon can of gas in this generator, and I don't care. I just have to turn it off between ten p.m. and six a.m. So seriously, two lead acid batteries, that generator, I'm good. Two grand. Yeah. All yeah. right, sorry, you can keep going. <laughs> we're just, we're just you know, blowing steam and wasting right? time, right? Here you go, solar <laughs> panels, the big limitation. Yes. So solar is simply using the sun's rays. It activates photovoltaic solar cells that are in the panels, uh, and they produce electric current. All of that current is sent through uh, wiring to what they call a charge controller, uh, and the controller regulates the amount of power going to the batteries and prevents overcharging what you talked about earlier, the various different controllers that, that control that we don't overpower our batteries. So we have various different ways of charging. You know, you got solar panels mounted on your roof, like the one picture there. Um, they're always going to be active as long as there's light out. They're going to be putting something out. Mm -hmm. A cloudy day, they're going to be putting something out. Yep. It may not be... Not the 21, half, 22 but, volts, it may right. be, you know, it may be 14 or 13 or 12 volts, but that power will still be going down to that, cert, that, that um, solar controller, and it will be regulating what, if anything, it needs to give to the batteries. So same thing with the, with the charge controllers that are built into your converters and your, and your inverter chargers and everything else. They're all monitoring the battery voltage. Um, to, to regulate what they send to the batteries. Some of it is, like a lot of the profiles in your inverter chargers are based on time. Right. You know, you, you bulk charge for, for two hours or something like that, and bulk charging is your highest uh, amperage and highest voltage hit, and then you, then you go into absorb charge, and you, you may be yeah. there for 
10 hours or something, and then it'll go into a float charge, which is just maintaining the level of the batteries at that point. I've noticed on my panel, I've got a 200 watt panel and I got a 10 amp charge controller. And that 10 amp, and it's like charge controllers, you get 10 amp, 30 amp, 60 amp, you know, and um, I noticed that my 200 watt panel will peg 9.5 amps on that thing mm -hmm. in a full sun. Yeah. So that yep. tells me, that makes me think that, okay, I need 10 amps of charge controller for every 200 watt panel I want to put up there. Yep. You know what I mean? So if I wanted to have three had, panels, I need a 30 amp controller. Right, right. Because it's going to max out at 10, and it's not going to feed any more no matter how many panels right. are going into it. Right, and and that's, and that's a big thing. crackles at 9.5, yeah. dude. You can hear it crackling. Yeah. It's like, yeah. wow. And, <laughs> and that's a big thing about solar. I mean, you have to... You can put all the panels you want up, but if you don't control the charge and you don't have enough capacity to, to handle what your, your panels are putting out to it, you're wasting, you're wasting it. it. Yeah. You know? You yeah. can go you can go up there and put, you know, thousand watts of power on the roof. Yeah. You know? But if you got a, a, a thirty amp charge controller, you're probably gonna fry the thing. Well, I was gonna reality. say I think I'd fry this if I yeah. plugged another one in because I don't know. And, and you know, and then so the other thing too, you guys, is that when you're talking about, you know, your battery well here, let's talk about the next slide. Sorry, I think I'm jumping in. So yeah. this is our just our basic type of, of uh, solar system, a couple panels. Uh, uh, that goes into some kind of a, a box, a hookup, a plug, whatever on the roof. That power then is, is transmitted down to the charge controller, which takes care of the voltage, regulates the, the voltage coming down from the panels. So on a, on a good, bright, sunny day, two panels like that are probably putting out somewhere in the neighborhood of about 23 volts. Okay down to the charge controller. So the charge controller is then going to regulate that voltage and that amperage that it's, that it's creating and charge the batteries as they need to be. Yep, and, so. that's, and you know now, and think of it, you know, the batteries are the fuel tank, mm -hmm. right? And we like to start off with a full tank. Right. So like I plugged it in at home and I topped them off. I towed it there and that kept them topped off, right. basically until I got to wherever I was going. And then as soon as I unplug from all my power and I go to just solar, at that point in time, there's a, my tank, my batteries. If you can imagine, I guess it's like, it's like there's a garden hose attached to the tank to empty the tank. And a solar panel is a soda straw refilling the tank. Kind of. Because, yeah. I mean, I, unless you have, I joke, but realistically, I feel like you'd almost have to rent the campsite next to you and cover it with solar panels too if you want to keep a 300 amp hour battery full all the time yeah. and run like an air or something like that. Yeah. There's no way. I mean, it's just like the, uh, you know, the, mo now, the more solar I mean, straws you got going in there, the better off it's going to be. Right. But, you and, know. It, and, it's, and it's also has a lot to do with what you're drawing out of the batteries. Um, you know, if you're running every light you got, you got the refrigerator on, you got, you know, an inverter running your TVs and, and, you know, you're trying to run your air conditioner and everything. Yeah, you're drawing a heck of a lot of power out mm -hmm. of whatever battery bank you got. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you got to have massive amounts of power coming in to replace the power that you're taking out. So, you know, it's, it's like reaching into a candy bowl and grabbing a handful of candy. You know, well, now you got a hole in the bowl where the candy was. So you either got to yeah. put more in it, you know, to keep it full or you're going to start losing power. Right. So with solar, it's the same thing. You draw out of the batteries, you have to be able to put back what you're, what you're using or you're going to end up running out of I power. I mean, eventually you'll run out. Yeah. Now, the reality is, is that if you can start off with full tanks and continue to refill them all the time, you can go pretty long. I mean, yeah. it's going to fluctuate yeah. day, night, day, night, right. and eventually you might run out. Right. But and, it can keep again, you going a while. Depending on how much power you use, in the in the evening when you're not charging the batteries you know if you deplete your batteries severely during that the solar is probably not going to keep up with it and you're going to end up losing power sooner if you can minimize the amount of power that you're using in the evening when you're not charging the batteries with the solar system and you're not plugged in or anything like that you minimize that power you use candles or or um stay outside by the fire or, you know, whatever, something, just minimize your usage, you know, then 
your your battery condition will be higher. You'll be closer to that full point when yeah. you start up the next day, and you, the solar system won't have to work its butt off well, to try we, and replace the power that you used overnight. We were doing that. We were using like flashlights and little rechargeable, yeah. you know, yeah. lanterns and stuff like yep. that. So, so, and and this is when you're boondocking again. This is this is what it's all about. Boondocking is, is totally a matter of conserving, conserving, yeah. conservation. It is. It is. You know, it is. you have to you have to control what you use. You've got a limited amount of water. You can yep. only put so much water into your tanks. You can only use so much power because you've only got so much. Unless you have ways to replace these things, you learn very quickly when you start boondocking how to conserve. Oh yeah. You know. Yep. So. This is uh, basically what we've been talking about the whole time. Um, solar is not an instant full power solution for getting power to your RV, okay? You're still limited to the output of the panels, the size of the battery bank and amp hours, and also if you're using inverters, the size of the inverter, the wattage versus the size of the battery bank, loads being drawn on the system and everything else. So in other words, can solar panels and a charge controller provide enough panel enough power to replace the battery drains from all sources? Well, yes and no. Depends on how much you got. Right. I mean, it's, it's, it, but it's, it's really, this is something that I really encourage you guys, if you want to invest the six, eight, 10, 12,000 or more, mm -hmm. you can spend as much as you want literally on this. Yes. Um, if you're gonna do that, you should look into this. You should become familiar with it yourself um, and, and know, because frankly, most of the time when you are traveling with your RV, with all of this in it, you are probably the one that knows more about it than anybody else. Yeah. And you need to be so that if something happens. So, you know, this is one of those things where if you're going to do this at this point anyway, I would probably get familiar. And that prevents you from making mistakes and wasting money. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I just, you know. You, you, can, you can you know, go so. through a, a boatload of cash real quick. You can setting up a solar system. Yeah. So you really have to, you really have to think about: Do I really need this? Am I going to be seriously boondocking? And yeah. where am I going to be boondocking? If you're boondocking in Missouri, in a lot of state parks in Missouri, solar's not going to do a heck of a lot for you because there's, there's so trees. many trees. That's a starling doesn't do me real good yeah. either. I mean, you if know? there's too many trees, it doesn't do me any good. Yeah, unless you know? you're in some kind of new campground where they just come in and raised everything, you know, and you got nothing around you, which I don't know too many. Echo Bluff State Park. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, okay. there's not, there's no trees. Yeah. Uh, and, and <laughs> it's I a mean, new yeah. campground. It's yeah. why. And I mean, they, they haven't grown yeah. yet. Yeah. And there, there's probably some in, in various different places that are that way. But if you're going out west into the deserts and stuff like that, California and, and oh, yeah. you know, Nevada and Utah and places like that, um, you know, the solar is, is going to be everything for you because well, you got unlimited sun out there, you know, 98% of the time. And you got a lot of land, too. Yes. So you can, there's not yes. a lot of public land that you can just camp on for free in Missouri and just pull up and, and right. hang out. You know what I mean? Right. You got a lot more of that out west as well. Right. You know, and the reality is most of us are seeking out, you know, electric sites. And the other reality mm -hmm. is this I've got this really cool small bunkhouse travel trailer, um, and I'm not yet willing to spend one third of the amount that I spent on this camper to do solar. Yeah. Because that's literally, I would have to spend a third again what I already spent to be able to do that. And as cool as that would be, it's just not. Now, granted, if I can start getting 100 amp hour batteries for 400 bucks, okay, now we're in business. Yeah. Okay. Got to talk that's about it. Now, yeah. now, because that, that says, okay, I can't buy lead acid that cheap at yeah. that point in time. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a no brainer. If they, yeah. if that, I might. Have to try that. I yeah, I would like to. I'm gonna have to talk to Nate about maybe getting some. I of think them we so get. We you know what? That's what we need to do. Test. We need to get. We need like to test. test we need to do that. Yeah. I'll test it on my camper. Yeah. Anyway. Um, <laughs> anyway, in a in a nutshell, what solar still is and what it really is all about is maintaining your battery. Um, it's it's really about keeping the battery charged. When the camper is setting out in the storage lot or something like that, or setting it that's you know, true is best alongside use right your now. house. Yeah, you know, it's not about keeping things running when you're out camping. Um, the systems that that most of the manufacturers are actually putting on them are maintaining systems. 
So. Okay, that explains it too. Because yeah. I tell you what, um, well, the truck, like for me, I was having some issues. And if I just plug in the truck and start it, mm -hmm. That charged that thing better than anything else. Yes, it was amazing. It I mean, it was yeah. absolutely because you're, you're putting about 30 amps of charge power <laughs> through that through that That's line. Great. So yeah, you're gonna yeah you're gonna you're gonna it kick works. that I mean, It really. Butt. Really yeah. works. I yeah. mean, that's uh, that's what I kept having to do. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to do some troubleshooting on mine because I don't know that my converter charger is outputting. So to do that, I'm going to need some tools. <laughs> Speaking of tools, <laughs> what a segue! God, that was great. <laughs> We're getting good at this, dude. <laughs> yeah. So it's getting late, guys. So. Enough, enough talking about all the power systems. We're going to talk about tools. Why do you need tools? I don't, well, because I mean, well, first of all, I don't know that I should have too many tools, but yeah, some people shouldn't have tools. So I know. That is no. that is a definite. But why, as an RV owner, why do you need tools? Because it's going to break when I'm out camping and not when I'm here at the shop. That's exactly right. <laughs> What's going to happen? Things are going to happen. Yeah. Things are going to break. Something's going to fall off the freaking wall. Yeah. You know, it, it's, something's yeah. not going to work. You know, or the wall might it, fall off. <laughs> it, it may. I mean, there are bees, guys. Come on, there are bees. We know this stuff. We know they're going to break. If we don't think our RV is going to break at some point, we probably should have never bought an RV. It's a it's a hand built building going undergoing yep. a hurricane and an earthquake its entire life, and it yes. was stapled together as fast as it could be the day it was made in Indiana. Yep. So, so <laughs> it's just the way they are. <laughs> these are some of the basic tools that I recommend that that every camper should have in their RV or in their tow vehicles, whatever. But a set of fuses, assortment of fuses. You should always have an assortment of fuses. Not only for the camper, but also for your tow vehicle. So what happens when we're going down the road? We end up blowing a fuse, and now we don't have our left turn signal. You know, or some things, you know, weird things happen like that. You never know why, you know, or our running lights go out or something. Well, if you got that assortment of fuses, you got your owner's manual, you can find that fuse, you can fix it yourself. You don't have to stop somewhere and have some RV technician go out at $185 an hour and replace a fuse that you could have done if you had it. So, a caulking gun and some silicone caulk. Hmm. You never know when you're going to have a leak. And if you got a caulk gun, you can fix it. You should probably also have some self-leveling sealant for your roof. Mm hmm couple of one or two tubes with you that way if something happens mm -hmm. you, you you snip a tree or something like that and rip a hole in the rubber yeah you got something to cover it up there's also a product that we sell that's called eternabond i was going to say eternabond it's a very 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 sticky substance tape like stuff it's like a butyl type tape you clean the uh, clean clean the roof off a little bit with some with some alcohol and uh, stick that on there and then put a little uh, sealant around it. You just fix your roof. Now you don't, you could probably go that 10 years with that membrane say, and never have to worry about it. Better than it was. Hey, Rick, I have a question for you. Yes. <laughs> in my garage, I've got this can of Flex Seal. I'll shoot you in the head. <laughs> you bring your camper into me with flex seal on it, I'm going to want to shoot you in the head. I swear to God. Do but, but Rick, not. I've made a boat out of my flex seal. I know. <laughs> and you, can have, you can have your boat. I guarantee you it's going to sink I'm in about 20 minutes. I'm going to make a minutes. whole camper out of flex seal. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Do not, please, do not put flex seal on your roof, on your camper. The stuff is a pain. It does not work. Trust me, I've had to deal with it. My technicians have had to deal with it. Anyway, yeah, they, yeah, they, <laughs> on yeah. TV. they can say anything they want on mm -hmm. TV. It's like on the internet. You know, you can say anything you want. Right, we're on the internet. So that doesn't necessarily mean, <laughs> And I'm saying anything I want. There so you there you go. But, you know, I'm a master certified RV technician. If I say it, I'm backing it up with things that I know. Right. Right. I'm more like the sham wow guy. He's yeah. I'm kidding. It's yeah. a joke. I'm gonna do it. Yeah. That's a joke. I can. Yeah. It, it's, <laughs> I, I, it's, it's after you, when you've done this for 20 years, you figured it out. 
Even yeah. if you're not, I mean, there's certain things. I have, like, most of the stuff on Rick's list here, I, I literally, I have all of this. Yeah. Every bit of this in my camper. And I do have a rudimentary ability to use these things. Yeah. You know, I, and, and that's from you've taught me and people have taught me to do this. Yeah. Um, but it's worth learning, you know, the first thing you have up there, a digital multimeter. Yeah. Does no good if you don't know how to use it. Correct. <laughs> you know what I mean? Correct. So a quick Correct. video, maybe we should do that. But a quick video on how to use a digital multimeter, we should do that. We should um, do that. We also need to do one on, on Lippert leveling systems. Oh, my God. <laughs> Mike, yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about yeah. to say. Mike, no, just, Mike just said in a year that yeah. we've been talking about that for two years, yeah. and I was about to say the exact same thing. We've been talking a about it for two years. friend of mine had one of our rentals out and yeah. called because the lift yeah. system thing wasn't working. We are going, we're going to do that video. We we're going to do, do that, that soon. Video. We're going to do that video we this summer. We will do that video. Yeah. Yes. So. That is that is definitely. We should do that. We, we should do. take like something really cool and go do a we talk at the campfire, the next campfire. We should go do. So over the summer, you guys, we do campfire talks instead of this. We just kind of hang out and talk about whatever, fireside chats, whatever. Right. That's what it's yeah. called, right? Those Thank things, you, yeah. Mike's like yeah, whatever. <laughs> so my, I've been trying to get us to go do that somewhere. So hopefully maybe we can actually go do that somewhere. Yeah. Maybe we'll yeah. take something and Perfect. we could do the leveling yeah. video out there with. Yeah, that, that would be cool. Actually, yeah, where, where yeah, where I could actually run it on yeah. site. Yeah, yeah that would be nice. Um, and by the way, so, if you guys don't know, we have a lot of instructional videos on our YouTube channel. Go check it out. Anyway, yeah. back to your tools. Sorry. Yep. So anyway, um, the, the tool list is you were looking. Um, I got I got the bigger tools, the more the more technical tools on there. But, you know, you need you need a hammer. You need screwdriver. You need some pliers, um, some wrenches, square bit. You know, the basic things. Yes. And a number two square bit is, <laughs> is probably the most important. Thing. It's really? Because. Yeah. 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 So. Um, but if you got the basic tools with you, you can fix a lot. Flex Seal sucks. Thank there, you, thanks. Ashley. You, the, yeah, you <laughs> nailed that right on. So, um, yeah, if you have the basic tools with you, you can fix so many things yourself. <clears throat> and you don't have to drag your camper to an RV dealer. You know? Yeah. Hey, uh, just you don't have to let it ruin a camping trip. You know, at the very least, you can help us diagnose stuff if you've got some of these basic tools with you. You can check to see what things are doing. You can check for power at places. We might be able to help you over the phone if you can give us a little bit of information about some of the things that's going on. You know, I can diagnose a lot of things over the phone. Yeah. And I've done it over my 22 plus years in this business. You know? I think I've got just about every tool necessary to assemble and disassemble this camper with me. Yeah. Most of the time, for yeah. real. I do. But, I mean, I carry, one like, nice, a regular floor. One, you know, like you get a BFH that takes care of that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the little, like, a jack, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the you know, just a floor jack. A little mini floor yeah. jack you can buy it at AutoZone yeah. or whatever in a little plant. I, I carry that. Yeah. I mean, because you can't safely jack the thing up without yeah. a real jack. You know what I mean? Yeah. A um, four-way lug wrench. Yeah. You well, know? I have this really cool uh, DeWalt half-inch impact that if you get this yeah. thing on Black Friday, you get it at half price. And let me tell you something, this is the best tool I have. I love this thing. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. It's great. That, yeah. <laughs> I, and, and I have one of those, too. I also but, have the yeah. DeWalt air compressor, the pancake compressor. Yeah. It takes the same battery. Yeah. I'm telling you guys. Fire, you know, we're gonna fire, go and, fire that compressor up? Yeah. I, dude, we're going to go out and do a video gas. on the tools. I got the tools. I yeah. think you'd be proud of me. I really do. But I have something that's not on your list. I have actually some things that aren't on your list. Okay. All right. I have a this plastic container of zip ties of all mm -hmm. different sizes. Yep. I have a plastic container. It's just like a clear plastic thing with a screw-on cap of bungee cords of different sizes. Yep. And I have duct tape. Yep. And electrical tape. Assortment of screws. Well, that just, is a good just a, idea. Just an assortment of, of you know, screws. My camper came with like an assortment. They were kind of all over the place. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah but you, you got to get under everything to find all them. <laughs> there was all screws you know? everywhere. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I was gathering them all up and it's yeah. over the screws. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> drawers, you know, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So, but yeah, that, I mean, that, that, yeah, that it happens. If you know, you know, folks. Yeah. <laughs> so. yeah. You just, you got to, you know, sometimes you got to go hunting. Yeah. You know. It's a oh, snipe sweet. hunt. Right? <laughs> uh, so, right you know on. what? I'm done. You got no, that's it? I'm We're done. done. Yeah, Again, I'm done. Again, this is really where we should cue copyrighted music that we can't cue. So, sorry. Yeah. But school's out. <laughs> so, um, 
<clears throat> but we will do fireside chats now. As most of you know, well, as our loyal, or our loyal watchers know, Rick does bowling in the summer. So it will be on Tuesdays instead of Thursdays, or whatever day we decide to do it, because it's really informal over the summer. Yes. So it's not going to be on the second Thursday of every month. It's going to be on random Tuesdays, yeah. or whatever day is convenient for all of us to go do yeah. it. Maybe to get everybody out, we have to do it on a weekend. I don't know. We'll never get a reservation at this point in time. I mean, we'll figure out something. They, they, <laughs> yeah. But um, we, we know people. We got there's some properties and stuff. We may, I mean, uh, you and know. we yeah we may throw some surprises at you. We could do something fun, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know, you know. If we need we need some fun in our lives. Yes, so, we know. do. <laughs> that's true. And hey, you know what? And that's reality. We'll do, that, that's a great ending to this. Is the fact is that this is something that we, we Rick and I and Mike and all of us have spent our lives at this point in time trying to facilitate people being able to have fun. You know. Yeah. Um, this is your how you choose to spend your recreational time and dollars. And recreational time and dollars are very important. Uh, we work very hard for those. And the way you choose to do that is a big deal. Um, we feel that RVing is the best way to make memories, you know, because that's really, you don't get time back. That's why you're going to see your daughter in yeah. next month. You know what I'm saying? We don't get time back, you know. And an RV is that vehicle to get you out there spending time with your family and the people that you love. And it, people just your friends and you get to meet new people i met a new friend over the weekend this last weekend i mean it was something else it was it's, it's just really fun you guys so you know if you've ever thought about maybe the rv lifestyle you know you need to go ahead and try it you don't ever look back and say i wish i would have because you never know when things financially or physically can change because it can change like that so i'm telling yep. you get out there and do this you guys i'm gonna have to break down and buy me something i think you should dude that's yeah. exactly what i did let me tell you i, I really did uh do i care do I carry grease seals and bearings for emergencies if I break down? Okay, so I do not have the ability myself to do that because um, I don't know how. I could guess I could watch a video. I don't, but I will say this. I did get my wheel bearings repacked after two on the second year. Um, I asked about the first year. I actually went to Rick because I did a lot of traveling I, on my first year, but, you know, really... Um, and with Rick's guidance, I am changing my wheel bearings, uh, or, you know, I'm having them repacked every other year. Mm -hmm. And Pete, so counter, you know, if you've ever come up to the parts counter, Pete, um, has been here for way longer than I have. Um, and, uh, he gave me really good advice too, that like when you stop for fuel or when you stop, walk up and just touch your hubs, put your mm -hmm. hand on your hubs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If it's getting hot, you got a problem. You know, so yeah. I feel that by doing that, you know, now. The only exception to that is if you've been doing a lot of heavy braking. If you're if you're in an urban area where you've been doing a lot of heavy braking. Is this because it causes heat because you breaks didn't. down the grease? Right. Okay. No, it, or, it'll cause, it causes heat in the hub. Right. So are you, are, is the, is the heat you're feeling because. Oh, got, I got your you. Your bearings are starting to wear down. Your grease is not there and you're starting to create friction there. Or is it because of the friction of the, of the. Brakes operating. Now, now all that if being your heat said, is more at the outside, that's going to be brakes. If your heat is more around the around the center at the hub itself, then it could be the hub. Well, and after talking about this and thinking about this, even though maybe I don't know how to do it, maybe I couldn't do the repair myself. Having the parts for someone that can do the repair yeah. is, <laughs> you know. If you can show up at the garage, now granted, most people like you to buy parts from them because they right. make money on parts and they put them on and they make money putting them on. That's how business works, okay? That's great. But in an emergency situation and you've got somebody that owns a business and need, is willing to help you, mm -hmm. if you actually have the part and you'll pay them to put it on, they'll do You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's, but if you don't well, have that grease seal and you're in the middle of nowhere. Especially if it's just a mechanic and he doesn't do that kind of work as yeah. a general rule and he doesn't have the parts and you have them, yeah. He's he probably gets gonna, work. Yeah, he's probably going <laughs> to do the job for yeah. you. You know, you know, most people help you out anyway. So yeah. actually, I, I actually appreciate that. And I guess uh, I know that, I mean, they can't be very expensive, are they? How much are no, grease seals? Grease seals are like 10, 20 uh, bucks, something? Yeah, something like that. They can't be very much money. I've seen these things. Yeah. So actually, that's a really good idea to carry. Um, you do have to have some specialized you know. tools. Generally, you can get away with it, you know, if you don't have them. But, you know, most of the time you got to have some specialized tools to pull the grease seals out. But. But um, again, if I have yeah, my grease good, seals, some a, any right. tire axle place should be able yeah. to do that. Yeah, you know, I mean, a, a trailer a big, place, a big screwdriver, and you can pop that thing out of there. Yeah. You know, so you got to tear it up. So you got to make sure you have a new one. But 
Uh, thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. And thank you for watching. Really, yeah, we, we really, really it. appreciate. We really, really appreciate participation. If you guys watch, please feel yeah. free to participate. We love tangents. Absolutely. We don't mind doing that. If you guys don't mind watching, we don't mind talking. That's what yeah. we do, right? That's what we do. Tune in over the summer. Keep in touch, you guys. I hope everybody has gotten out camping. If you haven't, I hope you get out camping. And let's have a great summer. And um, let's just, you know what? Let's go do what we do. Let's go let's, have fun, right? Let's, what's the uh, RBDA model? Go, let's go camping or let's go RVing or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do it. Let's do it, guys. So, I'm Dave. I'm Rick. Thanks for watching. See you next year.